All right, we've got one more to do here, and that is Mr. Danny Jansen. Uh, I am so happy that Danny Jansen is looks like he has found himself at the plate um, finally. And I say, I say finally, like you know, like I would have figured it out my first time at at uh, at the plate or something. <laughs> no. Quite, quite the opposite, in fact. However, um, here we are, Danny Jansen, uh, one, two, three, four, five, entering his sixth major league season um, and ready, looking like he's finally kind of his bat has come around at the big league level. Uh, so, Karen, I'm going to we're going to start just very quickly at looking at some numbers here. Danny Jansen has started to turn things around at the plate um, and we're seeing that show up in the 15 home runs that he hit last year. So, Karen, Steamer has him at 20. Do you think Danny Jansen hits 20 home runs in 2023? Yeah, I could say that. Yeah. It's funny because he he missed some time last year, and Alejandro Kirk early on was he was the catcher sh- sharing time with Zach Collins and Tyler Heineman and and whoever the heck else they had there. But uh, yeah, when when Danny Jansen came back, even though it's a relatively small sample size, his offensive numbers were better than Alejandro Kirk's, and Alejandro Kirk won the Silver Slugger at catcher. So. They've got a pretty good catching tandem there. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree with that. And Steve, Danny Jansen almost, when he came back, kind of looks like a different hitter. Um, He looks different at the plate. And I don't necessarily mean he's changed his swing or anything like that. I just mean he looks more confident, more aggressive. Um, So 20 home runs, Steve. Can you see Dan Jan popping 20? Um, The only reason I'm going to say no here is because of the what will soon be known as the failed Brandon Belt exper- experiment. If he's going to get a bunch of time at DH, that's going to cut into how much, how many at bats Danny Jansen gets because Alejandro Kirk simply needs to get uh, as many at bats as you pot. You want that bat in the lineup the best you can. So I think that Danny Jansen will, he may have more home runs per plate appearance than he has in the past. But as far as actual raw numbers, bless you. Um, I'm sure everybody that watches the podcast and I talk and Karen reacts, everybody's saying bless you to Karen because she has to put up with a lot. <laughs> but um, I, I think that's where the the raw numbers might be lower for Danny Jansen. But I think that his overall slugging and OPS and his home runs per at bat will go up because – He's going to have quality at bats and he has learned to take what he uses as a catcher and setting up the zone. He has learned to do that at the plate. He's hunting mm-hmm. for his pitch. He's a lot more patient. And then when he gets that pitch, he hits a rocket. He reminds me a lot of Mike Zeno. Zanino. He really does mm-hmm. not as big, but he's, he's that kind of hitter now where he hunts in the zone. And when he finds his pitch, he hits it hard and hits it far. All right. So, Karen, the next number I want to look at is his overall offensive production. Let's look at his OPS uh, in 2022. So last season, 855. Projected steamer has him at 763. Do you think, Karen, that he is more the 855? Because let's be real, like 855 is a very good OPS. So do you think he's more the 855 or more the 763? Closer to the 855. Mm -hmm. By a good bit. (laughs) Yep. And Steve, how about yourself? I, I agree. Again, it'll be over 800. I, 855, uh, if he has an 855 OPS, uh, that's going to be a huge boost to that lineup. But um, again, we all know what also steams. And so it's steamer and there's <laughs> something else that also steams. Um, and, 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 and most of these projections are more like the latter than the former. Oh, fair enough. All right, then let's get to it because I think a lot of these numbers of the talking uh, about what numbers we're going to see from Danny Jansen, I think a lot has to do with the actual number of uh, plate appearances that he's going to see. Um, Now, obviously, Fangraphs has him up over 400 plate appearances, so a a healthy-ish season for Danny Jansen. Um, With 100, Steamers got him at 109 games. So my question to you, let's go down to his innings caught last season. 
because I think that's really what we're, we, we want to get at here. So in 2022, 524 innings caught. Um, obviously, we'd have to go all the way back to when he was healthy for a full season. 2019, he caught 850 innings. So let's look at number of innings. I'm going to set it at, let's say, 600 just because. Um, Karen, does Danny Jansen see over or under 600 at bats or 600 innings excuse me behind the plate 600 innings oh man where's where's my math divide that by nine darn it so yeah that's about well 630 would be about 70 games because nine seven times six is Seven times nine is 60, 64, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, so just, so 600 plate appearances divided by nine innings, or 600 innings divided by nine innings is a 66.67. Okay. Um, so that's how many games. Right. Yeah, I, I could definitely see him doing that. In fact, I could, I could see it being a little more than that. I mean, Danny Jansen and Alejandro Kirk are both such good players when they're healthy, and they, they bring a little bit different skill set to the table. But they're both so valuable. And, and I know, I mean, there's there's the way and the ways that the game has traditionally been played. But then there's the opportunity to, to look at things in a different way. And most teams have a number one catcher. What if the Jays don't really have a number one catcher? What if the two of them, just because they're both so good, almost share the time back there? And, and in doing that, maybe they're both a little healthier and a little fresher by the end of the season, as opposed to being really banged up. Mm -hmm. And maybe it helps, as, assuming they get to the playoffs. Interesting. All right, Steve, 600 innings behind the plate for Danny Jansen. Does he do it? Does he, Do you take the over or the under? I take the over because, again, I'll just continue my Brandon Belt bashing as I have the entire show. I really think they're going to give up on him as we're re giving regular at-bats at DH um, by, by June at the latest. So I think that will then open up more playing time for Danny Jansen uh, behind the plate. So I'm going to go over. Yeah, I'm going to take the over, but not for the same reason. I just think he's their number one catcher. He's the the one that um, they have, I think, I get the sense anyway, that they have more comfort with him handling a pitching staff uh, and all of that stuff, uh, whether rightly or wrongly. I'm not suggesting that Alejandro Kirk can't handle a pitching staff. That's not what I'm saying. I just feel like when it comes to that alone behind the plate, I think Danny Jansen is their first option. And as long as he's healthy um, and there, you know, there's obviously going to be the built in kind of workload management that I feel is going to be across the board on this roster. Uh, so that obviously comes into play too, but I think he's just their number one catcher at this, at, um, behind the dish. So I'm going to take the over and I'm going to remind everybody to head on over to BetStamp and download the BetStamp app and you can track your bets across multiple books. Look for the best place to place your money. <clears throat> you can follow winning bettors. It's literally one of the best tools you can find to help your betting game. So Download the BetStamp app on Apple, Google, use the code JFTC, and start betting like a pro. 